Hey there, welcome back to STN32 Coding for Everyone. In the last tutorial, we dove deep into configuring and utilizing multiple ADC with DMA. Basically simplifying the way we handle analog data acquisition. As you can see here, this is still the setup for our last tutorial, where we basically have multiple ADC channel configured in DMA mode. One channel having an LDR here, as you can see, and another channel having a potentiometer. So if you want to know how to configure multiple ADC in DMA mode, please make sure you watch that tutorial. Link will be in the description box. Today we are switching gears and stepping into the world of SPI communication, one of the most widely used protocol for interfacing with peripheral like sensors, displays and memory chips, just as you see here. So basically I'm going to take you through a simple walkthrough how to build a simple SPI driver in polling mode. Basically from scratch, just like we did the ABC in poly mode, we're going to do an SPI driver in polling mode. We're going to go through the essential STM32 cube IDE configuration to basically get that SPI driver to send and receive data over the SPI. Basically by the end of this tutorial, if you stick around, you should be more comfortable using SPI in your STM32 project, as you can see here and ready to expand to more advanced topic like interrupt driven SPI or direct memory access driven SPI. So without any further ado, let's get started. So we go file, new STM32 project. Then we wait for the initialization. Once completed, we go on board selector. Now you need to enter your board. My nuclear board is 334. And I'm going to select Nucleo F334. And I'm going to select it right here and click next. Then over here, you need to give your project a name. So I'm going to say SPI driver underscore polling. Then we're going to click on finish. Clear all the pins out to basically initialize our chirp. Then we're going to head over to connectivities. And we're going to select SPI one here, right? My board only have one SPI. Yours may have many, but we're only going to select one SPI here. Then over here, we're going to select the full duplex master. And as soon as we select that, our hardware will be configured already with the clock pin selected, the MISO and the MOSI pins selected. But now we still need to configure the setup for our SPI here. Now here, my parameters are already complaining here. I've got a red here. When I hover over the two, it says here that please select a new value other than two from the provided list, right? So you might not have this problem here depending on the clock frequency of your main board here. So to resolve that issue, I'm going to go ahead and change this uh, clock frequency to 16 megahertz as the maximum clock frequency here that way my APB1 and APB2 peripheral clock will be set to 16 megahertz that way my SPI is one of the peripheral and automatically we can see that the two here press scalar is no longer being a problem right so it's no longer a problem so but now because I want to run this at a board rate of 2 megahertz I'm going to go ahead and change this to 8 press scalar that way I'm going to have a board rate of 2 megahertz. Now the next thing here is to basically just go into the GPIO setting and show that we are running at the maximum clock frequency here. Okay, so when I select here on all my three pins here, right, we can see that over here, down here, we've got a maximum speed where you can select low, medium or high. So we have to ensure that we are running at a high speed and you can see that the cube uh, STM32 cube IDE already selected a high speed for us. So that basically all we need to do here so we can go ahead and generate the code for our driver. Great, our code generation is completed and you can inspect the code that you've generated specifically for your SPI initialization here. You can see everything is set according to our setting on the IOC there. Right, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to include a header file here for my variable type here. Basically, I'm going to include the std int 
basically that allows me to use fixed type integers now what i'm going to do next is to basically declare two variable one variable is going to be holding the data basically the buffer for my tx my transmission data and the one variable will be for the receiver basically the variable that will receive the data so i'm going to go ahead and paste this piece of code here so basically i have a uint 8 tx buffer with these variable defined into it basically that's been initialized and this variable which got nothing but the size of this variable is basically the size of this variable this way i will ensure that this variable the receiver is able to receive whatever is in here so if i expand this i add another uh, data here let's say 24 that's mean uh, the size of this variable have been increased but i don't have to change the size of this variable because the size is already the size of this variable so that's basically what we've done there we basically one line of code away from completing this driver here so what i'm going to do here inside my main function here just right here i'm going to paste the line of code that will basically call the transmit receive spi function right now this is our spi handle and these two variables are the one that we've defined uh, up here basically the tx buffer and the rx buffer they basically data pointers that must be transferred in and out of memories and we've got the size that we need to pass and this is the size of the tx buffer that's the size of what we're going to be transmitting and receiving through our spi communication here and we need to pass a maximum delay but now for us to be able to test the hardware here normally we should have a configuration of a master uh, spi and a slave spi so that we can get the uh, duplex the full duplex communication going but because we only have one spi setup here so what we're going to do we're going to perform a very simple loop back test okay so that basically mean we're going to connect right uh the miso pin must be connected to the mossy pin basically a jumper right we're gonna do a loop back by jumping the two wires so miso which stand for uh, master in slave out and mossy is master out slave in all what is going to happen here by connecting these two pins together we're just going to create a loop when the master send the slave receive the master send the slave receive so that basically all we're going to set so i'm not going to generate any other code because uh, that was just to show what's going on here so now we can go ahead and uh, build this here uh, while we uh, basically locate the location of our pa5 and ps 6 as you have seen on the nucleo board now to complete our loop test we need to jump a uh, pa6 and ps7 which according to my nucleo board here which yours uh, i am sure is also similar it is connected on d11 and d12 so we basically need to put a jumper wire on d11 and d12 so that we can complete the loop test right so i'm going to connect one two three four here so that will be d11 and right there will be d12 just like that so that basically complete the loop connection uh jumping ps6 and p7 now let's go ahead and test this spi driver by running it in debug mode okay okay so we're entering debug mode now now we need to read the live expression here for our debugger so let's go ahead on live expression great but now we've got nothing to view on the live expression so to have something there we need to copy our variable here so i'm gonna copy the tx buffer and i'm going to paste it here in our live expression and let's look at the data inside our tx buffer we can see that these are the buffer that are being transmitted okay but now we also need to look at the data in the receiver buffer okay so let's look at the data in the receiver buffer let's go ahead and add another expression so that will be our receiver 
buffer data and when we expand these we can see that there are no data currently into our uh, buffer there but the transmission data contains data except that the receiver still got no data so now let's go ahead and hit on the continue basically run the program okay and we should be able once the program is running we should be able to see the data the, the the transmission data now available into the receiver buffer right as you can see here we now have the data that are being transmitted here on the transmission buffer and these data are now available here in our receiver buffer here great so that basically it for this tutorial uh, as you can see we were able to transmit data from our TX buffer into the receiver buffer using the single function transmit receive SPI. So this is a ground setting uh, a project basically tutorial. From here you can be able to now expand either interrupt or DMA or uh, use a master slave transmission basically using two devices. So stay tuned onto Simtech channel so that we can explore more tutorial of this nature. Until next time, cheers.